to the School on Wheels Gala. Welcome to our School on Wheels Open the Door Gala for our kids. You have my soul. But we can take more shining from above Well, I found you and you found me I'm in love, just wait and see I can't seem to shake off this funny old feeling I get when you're near Every single one of you deserves a huge thank you, whether you're on the boss's bill or you're here because you're affiliated somehow. Every single penny tonight goes toward a common goal, which is to give everybody the opportunity to get an education and move forward with their lives. And I encourage all of you, by the way, I was so smitten with this, I took my children to the new headquarters and we stuffed backpacks. We brought new backpacks that we got at like five below. We got a bunch of them. And I brought my three children, ages 10, 9, and 7, who have no idea how lucky they are. I mean, we live in a, a relatively modest house in Braintree, just like most people, but they are spoiled. I don't know how they got spoiled, but they're totally spoiled. And for them to see the simple things that they take for granted every day that is so special to these kids. And tonight, we're going to meet these kids and they're going to amaze you. And I will tell you, I mean, I know my goal, I was always told I have to make Cheryl cry. She has to cry, she cries easy, it's not that hard. Um, but I've grown such a strong sense of affinity for her and this group that I know all of you do the same. And so when I did this event last year, I went back to Cheryl, I said, you know, we gotta do more. And so we did the 5K, but we also did a story. And I, I'm not even sure if the story does it all justice, but we did the best we can. I just want to point out John Hammond is here from NECN, and he shot that story, by the way. Are you going to say hi? Wave to the crowd. Thank you. Um, so this is, we're going to show a quick, if you haven't seen the new story that we did on School on Wheels, it's from our Making the Grade segment. And then we're going to continue with our program with Cheryl. But I just, for, for me personally, I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Have a great time. Drive safely on the way home. And understand that if you have kids or cousins, nephews or nieces, uh, this is so important. I think you can scale this up, Cheryl, for the entire country. I know you stole it from California and you brought it back here to Massachusetts. But I swear we, we can make this go everywhere. I, I'm in. I'm all in. I am all in. If I, ha I always, say, I will tell this because I have the mic. One thing, the ego of being on TV is I have the mic. I have control. But I always said if I was going to be a multi-billionaire, the one thing I wanted to do was create some sort of endowment so every kid could own a book. And I thought it would be a great model because you could have it. You go to each school system and endow it, and in perpetuity, every kid could own a book because ownership is so important in this world and we don't understand how important it is sometimes. And this is so close to that dream I had because I haven't made the money and I don't think it's gonna happen. 
So I'm trying to give my gifts in kind to this endeavor to make sure it does happen for as many communities as possible. So sit back, give a listen, and then listen to Cheryl. Thank you very much. The number of people experiencing homelessness in the United States continues to rise, and its impact is far-reaching, especially when it comes to children. Only about a quarter of homeless teenagers will graduate from high school, so there's an impact. But one Massachusetts nonprofit is not just trying to break that cycle, it's trying uh, and actually doing it. Our Brian Shackman had a chance to see it for himself. Sounds good. All right, so. The past 10 years have been filled with challenges for Anna Lobo. The native of Cape Verde came to the United States at the age of 15, pregnant okay, and so. speaking very little English. I had a hard time back in high school. Once at risk of dropping out, she not only has her high school diploma, but also an associate's degree and is working toward her bachelor's. All things she accomplished as a homeless single mother. I was wanted to go to college, but I didn't think it was possible. Anna and her nine-year-old daughter are among more than 20,000 people in Massachusetts experiencing some form of homelessness, according to federal statistics. It's a crisis, one that moves Cheryl Opper into action. There's a lot of people that want to help fix things, but you need somebody to kind of rally the troops, and that's what I did. Opper founded School on Wheels Massachusetts back in 2004, at first working out of her home in Easton. The nonprofit organization, now based in East Bridgewater, provides support from kindergarten all the way through college with one-on-one -on -one tutoring for children affected by homelessness. Every week, the tutor goes to the student, whether it be a shelter or a motel, and the goal is simple, help that child focus on school. Anna has worked with her tutor, Beth, for the past eight years. I just admire her perseverance and her work ethic. She encouraged me a lot. What I see is most important for our kids is that they have to have somebody that believes in them. Somebody who says, I care about you and I know you can do it and I'm going to help support you. Tutoring is one part of the program. The other part is the backpacks. Each student gets one. Last year they gave out 1,200. This year they expect to get 1,600. All the material is donated, all the backpacks stuffed by volunteers. Today we have the Stonehill football team. We stuff these backpacks with hope and love and opportunities. For Opper, this is a personal mission. I would have never imagined that I'd be at eight college graduations and watching them go across the stage and pump their fists and said, I did it. I read a lot of Cam Chancellor books. For Anna, it's not just about herself. She wants to give her daughter a bright future also through School on Wheels. And she aims to pay it forward by becoming a school counselor with Beth by her side. She's like a family to me now. And um, I know without her, I wouldn't be able to be here. So I appreciate all your help. I know you do. She tells me thank you every single time I meet with her. I am so proud of our kids. It's, it's a blessing and it's an honor that I get to be a part of these kids' lives. An organization making the grade and giving families experiencing homelessness an opportunity to succeed. Brian Shackman, NECN. So many people touched by that great organization. And Schools on Wheels is always looking for community volunteers and tutors for its program sites. The commitment is one hour a week. If you're interested in donating your time, we posted the information on the NECN app. Yesterday, I was in a meeting, and I came out, and I saw this group of kids from Thayer. And I said, who's this good-looking group? And I start, and I always like to talk to the kids about what it's like for our students who are experiencing homelessness. And I look over, and it's Brian Shackman's wife, who is the teacher who brought him in for their community service day. So uh, thank Jessica again for championing our cause for our kids. So now I want to bring up Anna, who you just saw on the video. And Anna is pretty shy, but she's willing to come up on stage. I want to just brag about Anna for a little bit. So round of applause for Anna. So I've known Anna for a long time. She was 15 when I first met her. She was living at the old Colony Y, the Family Life Center. Um, and she needed help with science, right? Remember that MCAS science test that was just like, like a you know, a thorn in your side, right? So we matched her with the science teacher, Beth Young, who you saw on the video today. And so Beth would not only tutor her on our regular tutoring nights, but she just kept coming back and back, and you passed that. And then Beth and Anna became good friends, as well as mentor and student. And 
Beth was at your high school graduation yes. as well as I, and we were all cheering for you as you crossed that stage to get your high school degree. But then you went on to Massasoit, and you worked really, really hard at Massasoit. You went on then to become one of our Bridgewater Scholars. There's a page in your program booklet I would like all of you to read about. But Bridgewater State, Dr. Michelle Waken, who's here tonight, a round of applause for Michelle Waken, who started this program at Bridgewater State, where they give two full ride scholarships, one to an incoming freshman and one to a student who has graduated from a community college. So Anna received that scholarship last year. And so she is one of our Bridgewater scholars. She is also doing an internship at School on Wheels. And it's exciting to have her in the office. She's also, um, you can tell them what you're doing for your internship. Um, she didn't know I was gonna ask her to do yeah. that. Uh, for my internship, um, we just, uh, we work with the High School Plus, and um, kids, high school kids that uh, um, are ready to, to go to college, we help them the process, with the process. And, she's, and you're doing a stress management class for them, and you're also a tutor. Yes. You forgot about that. Yes. And her daughter, who is how old now, 10? 10. 10 years. 10 years old, has been a part of our School on Wheels program now since she was five years old. And what grade is she in? She's in fourth grade. And how's she doing? Great, she's doing awesome. Yeah. So she was the star in the video as well. So pretty soon we'll have, uh, she will be one of our tutors one of these years. Maybe she'll be running School on Wheels. But thank you for coming up here, Anna. And I really appreciate you being here. God bless. We're here tonight to celebrate our students' triumphs over their circumstances. Every student deserves a chance to reach their full potential. Every child deserves to have the same opportunities, to have the same backpack, quality backpack and school supplies, and to have that scientific calculator that W.B. Mason helps provide. So I would like to introduce now Mark Daniel Paul, who is going to give um, an introduction and present our champion for our kids, Mr. Steve Green, who is here tonight. A round of applause for Mr. Steve Green. So before Mark starts um, his speech, I just wanted to say, first of all, Steve, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I remember sitting in your office and uh, we had, I think, a 15 or 20 minute window to uh, talk to you about what our needs were at School on Wheels. And as we were talking, you said, well, what is it that you really need? And we said, we need 6,000 one subject notebooks and we need 20, you know, um, 250 scientific calculators. And we had a list this long. And Steve says, give me the list. And I said, well, you can do a part of it and then we can get, and Steve says, give me the list and Steve took care of the whole list, and he's been doing that since 2008. Thousands and thousands of children have benefited from your support, and our kids have a brand new backpack filled with wonderful supplies, the same thing as their classmates, thanks to Steve Green. But he doesn't just stop there. Steve also, very sharp dresser as you can see, right? So Steve likes to donate his clothes for our students. So Steve, I went over to get his clothes the first time and then he starts matching the ties. He opens this <laughs> closet and he starts matching the ties and he says, what do you think about this tie? And, and the sports shirts, the ones that are cotton that are golf shirts, are pressed and ironed and hung up. With, it's unbelievable. So anyway, Steve is uh, literally donating the clothes off of his back to help our kids. So Mark Daniel Paul, I'd like for um, him to now take over. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. So as um, Cheryl mentioned, my name is Mark Daniel Paul, and it is my honor to introduce to you tonight a man who's been nothing less of a true champion for School on Wheels and the hundreds of students that we serve. Um, ladies and gentlemen, tonight I'm here to introduce to you our champion and the chairman of the board for W.B. Mason, Mr. Steve Green. Since 2008, Steve and W.B. Mason has committed to donating thousands of school supplies to children whose lives have been impacted by homelessness. Thanks to Steve and W.B. Mason's heartfelt generosity, we have provided fully stocked backpacks to thousands of students in grades kindergarten through college 
to ensure that every child, regardless of their family income or lack thereof, regardless of their address, grade level, or socioeconomic background, has the supplies and tools that they need to attend school just like any other student and be successful in their academics. Steve and W.B. Mason's contributions to School in Wales have reached students living in family shelters, motels, transitional housings, sometimes doubled up with other families. Some of our students have lived in tents, others out of their cars. But Steve's extraordinary commitment to School in Wales and the students that, and the students in our state who have lost their homes helps to equalize the playing field for all children and helps ensure that those children have the same opportunities as their peers to, su to succeed in school. Essential materials that we very often take for granted. Notebooks, folders, pens, highlighters, markers, calculators for the older students. Steve and W.B. Mason has provided all of those and more to our students since 2008. Five years ago in 2011, Steve set up a college scholarship for Brockton High students to pursue higher education. I am honored and proud to say that I was the first Brockton High School student to receive this scholarship. And then in 2012, I graduated from Brockton High and then w went on to attend Suffolk University where I earned a bachelor's degree in political science and a degree in applied legal studies this past May. I am, thank you. I am currently a certified paralegal and the projects manager at Fitch Law Partners in Boston. I also currently serve on the board for School in Wales where I was appointed clerk this past September. My goal is to acquire enough work experience before attending law school sometime in the near future, although I've, almost every lawyer I speak to tells me. <laughs> so I consider myself very fortunate and I am beyond grateful for the unbelievable contributions that School in Wales with the help of Steve Green and W.B. Mason has made to my education. You know, I've gone through this stage, this experience of temporarily not having a home to call your own you know, this feeling where you wonder whether or not mom or dad would have the means to get you the materials you need for the next school year, or whether you would be the only kid in the classroom without a notebook or a decent backpack. The uncertainty that comes with graduating high school and juggling to find the finances to cover the inevitable expenses with, of college books and tuition assistance and T passes and so much more that college students have uh, to deal with today. That's why I can stand before you today and tell you that what you're doing here, it matters. That what you are doing here with your donations and heartfelt contributions, that they matter. That Steve's almost a decade long of donations and financial contributions to School and Wales, it matters. I know this because I'm a living proof of that, among many others. And as I invite Steve to join me on stage, I could, not, I could not be more honored to present this award, the School on Wheels Champion for Our Kids Award, to the Chairman of the Board for W.B. Mason, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Steve Green. Thank you. Bro. I'm sort of like Anna. I get a little nervous when I get up here, and I don't like to talk either. <laughs> Uh, Brian, thank you for introducing me, and Cheryl, it should be you that should be honored, and not me. I'm not worthy, I'm sorry, I can mean that. Um, but I'm glad to be here in front of you tonight. Uh, I do remember when Cheryl came in my office and we talked in the 20-minute window. Uh, I handle the donations at Mason's, that's one of my most important jobs, but I gotta tell you, this one's gradually coming up to my favorite new charity, 
sometimes you just don't get out and see all the good work that's getting done. I read about it, I hear about it, and she gave me a tour of the building that, that first year, and I, it, you know, and then some of the shelters, and like it was amazing that uh, I could see what you know good work our office products could do. And before I go any further, by the way. There's uh, somebody in the audience tonight that uh, is uh, one-third partner along with me and our uh, president and CEO, Leo Mean, who I hired back in 1975, and that's my brother, John, who's here tonight, so. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think this is the first time, though, he's really learned anything about School on Wheels because he just, he's always out on the road like I do. We, we get on the road, but uh, Johnny's got a great heart, and I'm sure this, this charity's gonna grow in our hearts and our minds and do more. Uh, we can do more for you, um, and I mean that sincerely, and we'll start real soon. Um, I wanna thank everybody for coming tonight. My wife, Carol's here tonight, my brother and his girlfriend, Maeve, uh, my friends, my relatives, um, my basketball players. I, I quickly wanna thank Marty Warner, especially the he took over as a commissioner after I retired, and he only lasted like another year, and then he retired. <laughs> but Marty got everybody here tonight, and I thank you all for coming. A lot of you probably don't know this, but um, my life was saved one day at playing basketball at West Virginia High with these guys and gals, and I'm forever indebted. So it meant a lot to me that you're here tonight, and uh, mean that, and the W.B. Mason family, I mean, we do good work, and I, I see Harbor One, and the best tribute I can give about Cheryl is, I once called Jim Blake up, and the president and CEO of uh, Harbor One, and I said, there's a charity worth looking at, you should look at School on Wheels, and less than a month or two later, he called me up and said, Steve, I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart. She does God's work, and you know, she's an amazing person, great charity, and Jim, thank you, and everybody from Harbor One on the board. Um, and I gotta be honest, I, I, when I started the scholarship part of it and, and started writing checks, I, you know, I, I told Cheryl, like, I really don't wanna meet these people because I'll, I'll melt, I'll, I'll, I'll get for Clint, you know? <laughs> and uh, and, and Mark came over and, you know, Cheryl introduced us and we talked for a few minutes, but I got one of my close friends, Jim Avon, who's an attorney, graduated in New England, and. So, I mean, he must know really uh, well that uh, for a young man like that to, you know, to overcome uh, everything he's had to overcome in his life to get to where he is right now on a level playing field, see what he's doing, it's got to be fabulous. And um, I mean, I really think that uh, Cheryl does great work and there's no further proof. You need no look any further than Mark, but uh, Anna and people like that. So I want to thank you for all coming out and supporting me tonight and some of the people. They wrote checks that I don't even know. I'd like to meet Fred and Sylvia Schwartz before um, I leave tonight, and uh, Brian. Uh, and so, uh, thank you again, and uh, this is a great charity, and I'm glad to be a part of it. And thank you for the great night. I have one more surprise. You're gonna love this one. Steve is, is so humble. But he said, I, he allowed me to say this, that he donated $10,000 tonight for the college scholarship program. He believes so strongly and sees the success of it. So thank you, Steve. And your surprise is, guess what? All of the students from Brockton High that you have supported are here on stage tonight to thank you personally. So first, I'm gonna come over here. And Zachary's gonna tell you what year he graduated from Brockton High and what he's doing now. Hi, so I graduated from Brockton High in 2014, and these days I'm studying hard at Bridgewater State University, and I'm a study abroad ambassador uh, this year, and I'm involved in a lot of different international programs on campus. Hello, um, I graduated from Brockton High in 2012. I'm also in Bridgewater, it's my last year, and I've done a lot on campus, thank you. Hi, um, I graduated from Brockton High in 2010, and um, graduated from Massasoit in 2015, and now I'm going to Bridgewater University for my bachelor's degree in social work. 
Hi, my name is Sephora, and I graduated from Brockton High in 2013, and this is my last year. Great. And Bridgewater State University. Hi, I am Dorka Lewis. I graduated uh, Brockton High in 2013, and I currently go to Bridgewater State um, for a major in criminal justice and minus in psychology. Hi, I'm Nicole. I graduated from Rockton High in 2009. I'm going to graduate Bridgewater State University this December with the Criminal Justice Universe yes. Criminal Justice Bachelor's degree. And you know Mark Daniel Paul. So this is the success, the triumphs. This is what happens when you invest and support, not just with your money, but with your heart, right? There's a difference. A lot of people invest in a lot of different things, but Steve has chosen to invest his heart and soul into these kids, and they know it, and they're succeeding, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. You're very welcome. And if any of you guys have a problem finding a job, you come and see me, we'll get you on I promise you that. Awesome. Zach's gonna stay up on stage, and you guys. Thank you so much, thank you. Love you. Okay, so these guys are going to go back to their seats and enjoy their meals. And next we have our student speaker. If you were at our gala last year, you saw Zach on um, like a Skype thing because he was in South Korea last year during our gala. So Zachary White, I met him, Gloria Rubilar, who's the guidance, wonderful, beautiful soul who helps so many children. Um, youth at Brockton High School introduced us and she says I've got this great student I want you to meet his name is Zachary so I went in to meet Zachary along with our student our staff and we were sitting there and Zachary was pretty darn shy I, he looked down at the floor for most of the time so the fact that here he is standing here who's going to make the keynote speech tonight is remarkable to me and he I said how are you feeling a little nervous no feeling good feeling good so, uh, yeah, good energy in the room because everybody here cares about you and cares about our students. And it's just remarkable to me to look out and to see all of these wonderful people here. So Zachary is going to tell you his story and share a little bit about how School on Wheels and Bridgewater State has changed his life. Thank you. So how is everyone doing tonight? Good. So firstly, thank you for being here at such a wonderful event commemorating School on Wheels, an organization that has helped so many get the great opportunities they need to succeed in their education. And of course, I myself would be one of those people. Let me begin by saying that homelessness is not something we all imagine to be so accurate. Many would not imagine a child when hearing the phrase homeless person. However, the situations surrounding this are all too real and serious. One of the most saddening things is that it tends to occur at no fault of the child under circumstances they cannot control. That being said, I would like to share my story, my struggles, and my rising prosperity with the audience tonight. With the many opportunities and the support I have gratefully been given. My experience with homelessness arose as a result of a lack of financial security and poverty. In my younger years, I lived among my mother, stepfather, and my brother. I never truly knew my father. I was born in Brockton, but I lived in Arizona for five years during some of the golden years of my childhood and beginning of my teenage years. At some point in time, however, my mother began to experience domestic abuse from my stepfather, and she decided that she would not remain and deal with such a thing anymore. So my mother, with her two sons, myself included, moved back to Massachusetts with little more than what we had in our pockets. Now during this time, we were staying with a friend of my mother, but we could not stay there forever. From here, we are able to find our way to a women's battery shelter that is located in Cape Cod. I would remember my summer spent there as some of the most grueling months 
I've ever experienced. There were no means of transportation to travel far. We are financially restricted, ate the bare minimum due to difficulty in finding jobs and having been moving place to place frequently. To add to this, you might imagine that there's not much to do. Unfortunately, at this point, my grandfather became very sick and there are few people that my mother could rely on for transportation to see him. Unexpectedly, he passed away while we were trapped in this situation. We are all very devastated. From here, I began to seriously question my situation and wondered what could I do in such a helpless place? I began to wonder what the key that was that would allow me to escape. I would come to realize those things mainly as endurance, education, and support. After spending the summer in Cape Cod, at last we were able to secure housing in Brockton. This actually made me rather happy for it was my childhood hometown and I would be able to relive the gold old days of when I was a child before I had moved. So I entered Brockton High after my eighth grade year and I had relatively mild years up until a certain point. I was just glad to have a place to stay, eat, and a place where I could focus on doing well in school. Up until now, I had a good idea about the importance of education and how it's a major end to poverty. With a free high school education, there's no reason not to take every full advantage and opportunity you can and rise beyond. During my junior year, things turned from the worst and things once again became difficult. My mother developed a medical condition within a matter of months, became restricted to a bed, hardly able to move. A little over three years ago, when I was just 16 years old, she passed away from this condition, leaving my brother and myself as the only immediate family to remain together for that moment. As you can imagine, this was incredibly strenuous to deal with losing someone that you have been through such hard times with for your entire life and having few people in your life for a shoulder to lean on. At this time, I knew I was severely dis disadvantaged in my life. I knew that crying and complaining and thinking about what I had to go through would change nothing. Because at that time, I thought I had hardly anyone except for myself. So I had to pick myself up and do these things on my own, or at least try. That was the only option I could see. However, I now lived with my sister who had moved with her family back to Brockton from Kansas. Things were still difficult since she had a family herself to take care of, but at this point I definitely had nothing to complain about and I only had sheer gratefulness. It was also around this time that I met some of the wonderful staff on School on Wheels. My guidance counselor, Gloria Rubilar, had referred me to School on Wheels, and I vividly remember my very shy and nervous self feeling such joy that I could receive support in my studies to not worry about many of the financial struggles as a minor in school. So while away from school for two weeks to recover myself, I still worked on some assignments that I ought to do, especially assignments for an IT certification class that I had been taking. Despite the worst event in my life to happen, I had my first major accomplishment, Became, becoming a certified entry-level IT technician at age 16, a month after this tragedy. I'll always remember my teacher for the IT class, who always gave me encouraging thoughts, such as that I was one of his best students, that I'm incredibly hardworking, and that those things are what pay off in life. He could see I knew exactly what I needed to be doing. The world is your oyster. He always said that to me, and my, assurance, my sureness only grew from there. Within a few months after that, and as a result of the first, I had my second major accomplishment, securing an internship at the Brockton Public Schools IT department. I now knew that with sheer willpower, the desire to succeed, and with some support, such as support from that particular teacher, amazing things are possible. Now, as I set my eyes towards university, this idea became a little challenged. 
I'm sure you're all aware of the finances and sheer debt needed to be taken on in, or, in order to attend a college or university these days. Yet a shining opportunity emerged in front of my eyes. Bridgewater State University, a school that many of my teachers had praised so highly in my first choice of university to attend, was offering a scholarship for those impacted by homelessness yet achieved academic success. I saw this as my chance. A nerve-wracking essay and interview later, I was notified of the life-changing decision that I was chosen to receive the scholarship. Housing, tuition, fees, and the room deposit are all covered by the scholarship and books to a certain extent. To make it even more complete, School on Wheels even offered and still offers to pay for uncovered expenses such as school supplies and any other necessary books. I now had all the tools I needed to truly succeed and for someone like me who is so educationally focused, I felt like I was in heaven. Now, as a Bridgewater State University scholar, I'm simply flourishing. In my first semester, I received a 4.0 GPA as a computer science major. Thank you. And I began the process of discovering myself further. I would like to add that I love to learn things. It doesn't matter what it is as long as I find it interesting. I love self-improvement. The summer before I started university, I had the goal to learn a new language. That language happened to be Korean. It's vastly different from European languages, has its own alphabet, so I thought it'd be a challenging thing to take up. After making Korean friends to help improve my use of the language, I became more interested, and after attending a Korean culture event at Bridgewater State University, I solidified an idea in me that I wanted to try studying abroad. This was never attempted before by a scholarship or a scholar for a whole exchange program, so I tried bringing it up to see what was possible. With support from School on Wheels and those at Bridgewater State University, I've never felt that I'm restricted to try new things within reason. After conducting all of the research and preparation and applying, I, it came to be indeed possible. Would you believe me if I told you that there would be another amazing opportunity that be, would be coming my way? Well, because of the grades I received in the first semester, I was nominated for a certain scholarship offered by the Korean government for those interested in studying abroad. This included monthly payments which well exceeded room and board fees that I would need covered. These included compensations such as airfare and insurance. Well, after applying, I received that scholarship. And because of that, I spent the best year of my life studying abroad in South Korea. So let me tell you a little bit about it. So the food was simply amazing. The food culture there is that almost everyone eats out at restaurants for their meals rather than buying groceries and cooking from home. And much of the food is served in a single dish that is shared among everyone who's eating. Um, the food is very spicy. Uh, you'll find certain uncomfortable but delicious treats such as grilled pig intestines. <laughs> it's actually really good. <laughs> Um, my favorite treat was dakboki, which is a spicy rice cake dish. Um, scenery was also amazing. In Korea, you have two sides. Um, you have the very beautiful, rural, and stunning developed city side. Uh, Korea is very mountainous, and it's really great for hiking. One thing that surprised me, though, was how hardworking I saw that the Koreans were. There's a particularly great emphasis on education in Korean society, and I came to find that people in Korea are very group-oriented rather than being individualistic. In Korea, everyone loves to share the same fashion. Everyone loves to share the same haircut. But more importantly, everyone supports each other. Families are more careful and stay together. Friends are always close and eat out together every day, and so on. Relationships are close and remain that way throughout the years. This aspect is one thing that really touched my heart. The homelessness and poverty rate in Korea is very low. A reason for that, I think, is because of the support of nature that is such an important cultural aspect there. 
between both family and random citizens. Also, of course, I made some amazing friends and some I will continue to know for many years to come. While there, I also had the great experience of working as an English essay writing tutor. After my return to Bridgewater State University, I became a vastly different person. I would describe myself as confident, open-minded, insightful, and even more independent than I was before. As of now, I'm spending my new semester as a study abroad ambassador, and I'm in a program that allows me to get to know and assist international students on campus. Because of this, I was able to go on a whale watching trip and a trip to Washington, D.C. for the first time, so that was pretty cool. My GPA remains at around a 3.8, and I have made the decision to change my major. My major is now physics. So there are many reasons for this. Firstly, although I was doing really well, I'm no longer really interested in computers. Now I'm interested in this fascinating physical world we have going on here. I want to just dedicate myself to some of the most greatly challenging work because it's a goal I can continue to work on throughout my life. Secondly, I love the university environment. I love learning, education, and teaching, and I want to be a part of that. Therefore, if I apply the determination I have used thus far, I would definitely try to go for a PhD. I want to dare myself and attain even greater heights than what I would from just graduating from university. This path is no doubt difficult, but I know within me that with perseverance, I can accomplish anything. However, it all began with support and opportunities. These days, my brother is serving in the US Air Force and my sister recently graduated as a dental hygienist. And I want to tell them that I'm very, very proud of you. The world is now indeed my oyster, as my teacher had said. When one takes the opportunities they are given, they stack up. A door opened is a door that leads to two more rooms with doors. You just need that first key. So please, assist to provide those who need the foundation they need to succeed. I want to thank my occupational guidance counselor from Brockton High, Gloria Rubilar. for introducing me to School on Wheels. I also want to thank School on Wheels itself and its supporters. Bridgewater State and its wonderful people, especially you, Mich Michelle. And my sister for where I am and where I will be. These groups of people have been with me and supporting me throughout the years, and I say with confidence that they will always be there for me. Thank you, everyone. The world is your oyster, and here it is, a standing ovation, 350 people, Zach. And you did it. Yeah. You did it. Wasn't nervous either. He said he wasn't nervous either. <laughs> yeah, very confident. You're going to be a professor someday, I can tell. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Thank you for being here. And thank you, everybody. I just want to, before we show our last video segment and bring up our last college student who's going to come up with her mentor, I just want to give a big shout out and thank you to our awesome gala chair, Carol Marcus. Carol Marcus is a rock star. She has been our gala chair for the last three years and has worked tirelessly for tonight. So thank you, Carol. Also, we want to thank our gala committee, our staff, our um, board of directors, our advisory board, all of our supporters that are here tonight. It means the world to us that you 
have embraced our mission, that you care about our students, you care about our mission, and that you are a part of that journey with us. So 12 years ago, most of you know the story, I started this program out of my basement in Easton, Massachusetts. I had two family shelters that we were working with, my one staff person who's still with me today, Sue Podolsky, and I, a big shout out to Sue. She really has been my anchor and my life raft for so many years. But we started with two shelters and worked with Father Bills in Mainspring and was servicing kids living at the Evelyn House and the David John Lewison Center. And then we grew to another shelter, and then we grew to another shelter. And in 2008, we had our first unaccompanied youth who was living in the Mainspring shelter in Brockton. He wanted to go to college. And the case manager said, do you guys do college? And I said, we do now. We added the High School Plus program. You guys are witnessing here our students, Zachary, who are part of our High School Plus program. We work with students eighth grade all the way through college. And we don't just get them into college or help them with their FAFSAs, help them with their dorm supplies, as we provide college mentors. So the next story that you're going to see is a story about Nicole O'Brien and her mentor, Kathy Strange. We started out pretty much like any other family. But 25-year-old Nicole O'Brien of Brockton and her family soon found themselves homeless, victims of the Boston Marathon bombing, even though they weren't anywhere near the finish line. Our new landlord called us and said, I can't let you guys move in. And we're just, we asked him, we said, why not? What happened? And he said, the woman that was moving out was injured in the bombings. He goes, so she can't move out. Not having a place to live added more stress to being a college student at Bridgewater State University. So she and her mom searched online for help. She asked if there were any organizations that helped out with school supplies. Because at that point, I was using blank pieces of notebook paper that I had erased all of my notes from because we just couldn't afford it. Nicole found School on Wheels of Massachusetts. They specialize in helping students affected by homelessness. Cheryl Opper is executive director. The latest point in time study done by the Department of Education um, estimates that there's approximately 37,000 homeless school-aged children each year. Opper says the average age of a homeless person in Massachusetts is eight years old. And every time I say that, I've been saying that for 12 years, it, still feels like it's a, it's a punch in the stomach. Since it was founded in 2004, School on Wheels Massachusetts has helped more than 2,000 students. They've also given out about 7,500 school supplies, including things like backpacks. Do you use mechanical pencils? After her first visit three years ago, Nicole walked out with more than enough supplies for school and a mentor. You know, I was fortunate that Nicole is very outgoing, very open, you know, communicates very well wanted a mentor and um, we ended up with a very natural relationship from the get-go. Kathy Strange has been in Nicole's life for three years. We all have struggles, right? They're just different struggles. For Nicole, a search for help turned out to be so much more. She will graduate from Bridgewater State University with a degree in criminal justice in just a few months and for that she credits School on Wheels of Massachusetts. I've never had to ask for anything. They always, do you need anything for the upcoming semester? It was, from the very moment I walked in, it was a very welcoming environment. Tina Martin, WGBH News. We provide tutors and mentors for kids kindergarten through 12th grade. They go into the family shelters and the motels and tutor one or two hours a week. What we wanted to do is we wanted to offer that one-on-one -on -one support for our college students. So three years ago, we piloted a High School Plus College Mentor Program, and Kathy and Nicole were one of our first matches. I wanted them to just talk a little bit about what's next and how you've been able to help her, Kathy. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So actually, Nicole's going to graduate in, I think, formal classes. So she's graduating this semester. So really, I wasn't so great at the school part because I felt that Nicole, at 23 years old, I think at the time that I met her, had already handled a lot more things than a lot of people have handled. I felt kind of funny doing flashcards with her. So we didn't do so good at that. We, we actually made our bond as friends and more of a support system, actually for each other. You know, I think that there's lots of extraordinary people in the world. It really doesn't matter what your financial background is to make you extraordinary. 
I feel that Nicole is extraordinary. I feel that Cheryl is extraordinary. And I feel that I'm just someone lucky in the middle that gets to know both of them and be part of this whole program, which is extraordinary. Nicole and I are actually working on now what she's going to do once she graduates and to build her life. And it's going to be great. She's going to graduate, she's going to get a job, and she's going to live her dream, whatever that is. And I know she can do it because she's extraordinary. So she's going to talk to you about everything else. I'm here to talk about everything else. <laughs> All right, as Kathy said, I'm due to graduate this December. Um, I was actually expecting to graduate next year, but last semester I took six classes and kind of just stepped up my game a little bit. Um, uh, uh, sorry, I'm really bad at talking to big crowds. This is anything that gives me anxiety, it is this. <laughs> All right, I, what I want to do when I graduate, I want to go into corrections, I want to work with young adults. My main goal is to show them that just because you make a mistake in your life does not mean that defines you. In my life, I have not done the best things because of my situation. I'm not proud of a lot of the things that I did, but I feel like I would be able to relate to those kids who would be in a dark time or a difficult situation to let them know that there are people out there that are like you, that there are people out here that care about people like them, that there are all sorts of individuals who will be able to understand and maybe be able to help them in their situation. Um, I myself, I never really expected to be able to do something like this. I, before I met School on Wheels, I had actually failed my last class at Massasoit. I had to retake my entire year all over again. And that, just like the film said, that was the time when I was taking my notes and erasing everything and making all sorts of new notes on my used notes. And I found Cheryl and we found School on Wheels and I really can't thank them enough. I really can't. They gave me Kathy, who has been the best mentor ever. Um, like she said, she's not really the greatest with flashcards, but who is at this point? But with her, I don't have just a mentor, I have a friend. I have an individual who doesn't look at me in a patronizing way, who doesn't sit there and like, oh, you're a big girl, you can do it. She actually sits there and goes, okay, what can you and I do together to help you get through this? And probably the best thing is she doesn't brag about it. She doesn't go around telling the world, hey, I helped out this girl today. I go to school on wheels and I do all these great, great things because she herself is a good person and she's modest about it. And she gets so excited to actually help and to make a difference and to do all these amazing things. So School on Wheels in and of itself has gifted me school supplies they have gifted me travel passes on the train so I can get to class. But more importantly, they have gifted me someone who I hope to have for the rest of my life. She is not going to not be here once I graduate. We are more than just a mentor and a mentee. She is one of my very, very good friends. Awesome. Another round of applause for a graduate who's graduating. I want to call Carol Marcus up to the stage. She doesn't know this, but Carol, come on up. Come on. Come on, we're on a schedule here. I'm on time. I'm never on time, and we're running on time, so come on up. So Carol is very humble herself, but Carol. What? What? Carol. So Carol has been tutoring for School on Wheels for a long time, and she just decided that one site wasn't enough, so she added a second site. And then I said, Carol, I need to drop off backpacks at the Super 8 Motel. Can you be there? You got it. And then she rallied her friends, and she has a lot of friends, and they came to help deliver the backpacks too. And I look over, 
I look over and I see Carol and she's empty in the backpack. And she, this little girl wanted the Hello Kitty backpack and she got the Dora backpack. So who do you think restuffed the Hello Kitty backpack to make sure that she went up to her room with the Hello Kitty is Carol. Aww. So Carol, thank you for all the different many ways that you support and love our kids. You are the best ambassador for School on Wheels and we love you so very much. Thank you. Love you right back. You, Is she hot or what? Huh? Love I love you. Thank you so much. I also now just want to, I'm going to bring Brian Shackman back up on stage, but I want to thank Lisa Eves, who when I asked her if she would be our performer tonight and donate her time and her talents and make it special, she did that and more. She said, I have this performer. Oh, I've got this kid. Caleb, he's 13, he's great, I'm gonna bring Caleb. And then she's like, and her girls came back from college, but my daughter, who's in the audience, Lindsay Opper. Hi, Lindsay. Lindsay took singing lessons with Lisa Eves when she was 10 years old, and Lindsay made a few of the Jazz for Kids CDs with Lisa. So I'm so grateful that you chose to share your time and talents with us tonight. It was so special to have you here. It meant everything to us, so thank you. Brian Shackman, come on back up on stage. There's a couple things I want to do before we do the live auction. Have we thanked Cheryl enough? Uh. Seriously, I mean. Uh, okay. What is the future of America? What is the future of our children? When they are struggling, we lift them up. So get on the bus, school on wheels. We help each other when it's time to learn. We help each other through the hard time. Your education is our main concern. So it's time to learn. Educational. 